Good morning. Um, thank you for having me here. I have a story around drones as well. And it's interesting. It feeds into Chris's story a little bit. I'll refer to it in a minute. Um, we started this company called Matternet. We want to create a transportation network uh, for matter. The name tells the mission of the company. We want to create a network for transportation of matter that is inspired by the ideas of the internet. And um, it's a very young idea still. It started off uh, a couple of years ago, just down the road from here at Singularity University at NASA Ames. And um, this is a place that you know, people come together in a summer program and they try to figure out ways to solve humanity's grand challenges. And the challenge that we focused on was extreme poverty. And pretty soon we realized that there is a very strong correlation between people living in extreme poverty and transportation networks around them. So today there's one billion people in the world that do not have access to all season roads. Imagine this, one billion people, right? One seventh of the Earth's population are totally disconnected for some part of the year. We cannot get medicine to them, they cannot get critical goods, and they cannot get their goods to market in order to create a sustainable income and come out of poverty. In sub-Saharan Africa, for instance, 85% of roads are unusable in the wet season. Investments are being made, but at the current level, it's estimated it's going to take them 50 years to catch up. And catch up to what? In the US, we have 4 million miles of road or more. Very expensive to build, very expensive to maintain. Is this the future that we'd like to see in you know, the virgin continents of this world? So we saw this and we thought, you know, there's got to be a better way. Can we figure out a system? Can we create a new system using today's most advanced technologies that can help these countries leapfrog? Hold this thought for a minute. Let's switch over to the other part of the world. You know, the future of this world is megacities. We live in cities. In, you know, more than half of the US population today lives in cities. More than half a billion of us live in megacities. These are cities with more than 10 million inhabitants in them. What they all share in common is congestion. We haven't been able to figure out ways to scale infrastructure, road infrastructure, fast enough to serve those booming economies. These are just uh, some stats for the US. You can imagine the situation in you know, many of the emerging world, you know, Brazil, India, China. Um, these stats will be much less favorable there. So when we saw that, we thought, you know, it's not just a question, can we leapfrog? We have to leapfrog. We have to figure out a way to lift some of that transportation lo roads, uh, load off the roads. And we think that's the answer. We want to, be, to basically create a network of transportation using small UAVs. When we started off this project, we thought, let's just you know, go all the way. The killer app of you know, transportation is human transportation. Let's just try and figure out a way to basically you know, strap a set of sensors that the small UAV uses on a go-kart and have it fly you know, at NASA Ames, we thought in two, three weeks we can pull it off. <laughs> uh, and we thought, okay, what's the best place to start? We uh, logged on to 3D Robotics website, we ordered, we ordered an Arduino kit, a small quad, and we started sort of playing with it. And, um, you know, the idea was to basically get this thing, you know, together and running, fly it around, and then try and figure out, you know, how can we scale it up uh, for it to serve like a bigger, pay bigger payload. Now, as we started looking at what could we do today at this small scale, and those small sort of quads or octos or hexes, the name refers to the amount of motors that they carry, um, they can transfer today, say, two kilograms. We started thinking, you know, can, what can we do with those two kilograms? And this is the idea, I think, that really gelled in our minds, and um, we created something that we think could be the next paradigm shift initially for lightweight transportation. So um, we want to create a network of small UAVs, each one covering a small range, about 10 kilometers today, and transporting a small payload, about two kilograms. But between them have a network that allows a relay type system that allows them to cover a big area. And over time, through repeated 
um, uh, repeatedly executing reliably transportation links be able to uh, transport big loads by aggregating you know, at the point of um, destination. So this is what we call the Matternet. Uh, we have three key technologies. The first is small UAVs. The second is those um, uh, trusted locations on the ground. We call them ground stations. We swap in and out of them in order to exchange batteries and go out again or, ex or swap loads. And the third is the routing software, this AI-inspired engine that runs the whole network. It matches supply to demand. It routes vehicles where they need to be in order to avoid weather conditions and other risk factors and so forth. Let's look at these three components in some more detail. Um, the vehicles we use today, uh, we use mostly off the shelf stuff. Uh, some of it is from uh, Chris's uh, platform, some others we're experimenting with. We want to basically um, figure out a way to make transportation using small UAVs uh, very, very reliable and very, very safe. So we use uh, an optocopter today, it's able to transport two kilograms over 10 kilometers at a speed that allows us to cover those 10 kilometers in 15 minutes. This type of um, uh, transportation capability may seem small for a rural application, but if you put it in a city environment with you know, 10 kilometers you can span, you can go anywhere in a city in 15 minutes, compare this to you know, sitting for hours in traffic jams you know, in Sao Paulo. The heart of our system is this automatic battery and load swap mechanism. So the idea is that we land on a ground station and we swap a battery and load automatically. At the beginning, because most of our missions are going to be in the developing world, this is going to be manually done by you know, human labor. Over time, we try to figure out ways to do this automatically so we have a very reliable uh, router for our system. Uh, the ground station is a place where we uh, can land and have a safe environment to do this battery and load swap. And these can take different forms. This is like the simplest form. It um, only is, is, if you compare it like with the internet analogy again, we have things that sit in the background and do the routing and ground stations that are like, you know, front uh, user facing sort of terminals, uh, such as this one, where someone can basically go and get or, the, uh, you know, pick up or put in a package in the system Drone comes in, takes it, goes out again. Uh, we'd like to see a future of, uh, you know, of transportation of um, last mile. You know, we, we think that this could be the solution to solving the last mile delivery problem, uh, which is a big problem that a lot of people are trying to figure out in all parts of the world. And um, uh, Matternet OS, this AI uh, system that uh, basically resolves how the network is operating for us. Um, the uh, main jobs that it does is that it does vehicle routing, um, it does package routing, and it manages the whole network. You can imagine a situation where you have, say, you know, a network like this, 2,000 vehicles, 2,000 stations, serving a location like you know, downtown Sao Paulo. You have bad weather coming from the east. What do you do? How do you make decisions? How do you route the vehicles? How do you uh, make decisions when to land part of the network? How do you shut off part of the network for security? all that sort of stuff. Um, the, you know, on, the, on the front end of this, we want to basically maintain uh, an image of whatever is flying in the national airspace in whichever jurisdiction and be able to show this transparently to the authorities and they should be able to uh, have access to this and you know, if there's any sorts of emergencies, you know, be able to ground them down and so forth. One of the key challenges here, of course, is regulation. Uh, in most places in the world, you cannot operate this type of network today. Autonomous flights are not permitted. So we're taking a little bit of a, an activist approach and we're trying to figure out places where you know, the, the need is so high today that people would like to basically you know, make exceptions to the rules or give us specific, uh, specific uh, certificates of authorization for us to be able to run the networks. And I'm gonna show you uh, this from, can we run the video? Huh? Ah, you have the PDF? Okay. All right, so um, I was going to show you a video from one of our uh, flights in Haiti last summer. Uh, fortunately, it's not contained in the presentation for some reason. So um, uh, we went out there and we basically tried to figure out, you know, where can we use this thing? And we started basically prototyping uh, 
different sort of usage scenarios and getting people around us to uh, help us uh, understand how can we use this and how can you know, these guys be early adopters. Uh, one of the crucial questions is, you know, what's the cost today? And that depends a lot on the assumptions that you make on, you know, what are the base costs for the different components of the system, uh, what is their lifetime, and so forth. Today we have a cost of about 24 cents for transporting two kilograms over 10 kilometers. The energy cost of, in that is only two cents. This, what, uh, is, this is what gives us hope that this could be a new paradigm. So two cents to transport 10 kilome uh, two kilograms over 10 kilometers in its, cl its clean energy, it's very efficient, and you know, most, in most um, uh, mega city environments at least, very, very quick. And of course, we'd like to see the cost going down, reliability going up. Again, we want to leverage all the great work that is happening in you know, many places in the world now, not just in open source communities, but in many universities and so forth. I think we're gonna see amazing things happening in this drone space, little drone space, and we're gonna be able to take advantage of this. So, you know, we have all sorts of things we're looking at, humanitarian applications, courier applications like I've talked uh, about before. We'd like to see, you know, those little stations in rooftops swapping batteries and creating small transportation networks. Um, and the idea here is to basically create the next type of network in the world that's a network for the transportation of matter. Thank you.